Okay. It's our oil all lard in there. Get ready to put in the lye and water. This is the most I have put in yet of lye and oils. So might actually be one of the soaps that takes an hour to cook because of the <laughs> amount of oil used. Six and a half pounds of lard actually and this is going to be my first all lard soap. It's probably going to take a little bit longer to come to trace and I'll probably end up stopping the video a couple times and I have no editing that I know of. This will all be trial even doing a video, my first one. I end up bringing in my cell phone with a light on it to actually lighten things up a little bit. Definitely gonna have to keep a closer eye on um, when the soap starts to cook and kind of fold over on itself. We're at it five minutes up. and 54 seconds of painstakingly talking, and uh, of course the stick blender noise. I promise I won't play any music though. So he's still pretty liquidy. This was actually a cold process soap recipe. Um, but as you know, or maybe you don't know, Cold process can be hot process and vice versa. Uh, I am doing this as a hot process because I would like it to be done sooner rather than later. Like many of you, I have zero patience for waiting for soap to cure and I'd like to use it right away or in a week or less. I have um, a girl who is like a daughter to me, very, very sensitive skin and sensitive to scent. So she told me that she wanted just a plain bar of soap. So this will definitely be her um, first try of one of my soaps. And then you can also use this because it is containing no fragrances or anything for laundry. And this is supposed to be very good to use to um, to clean your laundry better and just wetting a bar down and rubbing it on the clothes. It's supposed to make whiters white. No, white's whiter. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I do make my own laundry soap and I have for almost four years now. So I'll probably try this uh, bar of this the next time I do make it. Although I'll miss the smell of the foul naphtha that I normally use. So. <laughs>
most of you are not going to want to use your stick blender for long bursts like that because it will burn it out. Um, I have three of them, so if one dies out, I'm not going to be too upset. This one was a $10 stick blender, uh, so it wasn't super expensive. So I'm just kind of trying to see what kind of abuse it will actually take before it finally uh, kicks over. And it's a Proctor Selects. So pretty liquidy, although it's very white looking now. Definitely no, not even light trace. Usually I reach trace much faster. I'm certain it has to do with the type of oils that I normally use. I've never done, like I said, a bar of just lard and lye, so this being a first. So you're learning with me. Those of you who have already done it, though, already know, so you're probably not surprised. or if I've seen, but I am wearing my protective gear. We are at 15 minutes right now. Well, not even a light trace. Carter, are you bringing my um, cell phone, please? I'm going to put uh, the flashlight from my cell phone onto the soap so that you can see what it looks like. big difference oh yes so this will be important I don't have a very bright light in my dining room so we will uh, use this light to pick up all of the different mashed potato phase and of course the Vaseline phase so I'm gonna go ahead and shut the flashlight off for now though you want to burp your blender and just see that big bubble that just came up if you take it out for those who haven't done that was my ungloved hand I took it off to feel my stick blender to make sure it's not getting too hot I just realized I forgot to put my forgot to put my apron on. So I just put that on. Soap is getting a little bit thicker. Um, still not at trace yet, or even a light trace, but it is getting thicker. I can see that. Definitely at a light trace now. You can see how it's coating on, oops, coating onto the stick blender. And in a very, very light trace. And not because of what you can see on the surface, but more of what you can see on the surface of the stick blender. I would call that a light trace for me. might not be that far off, which would be nice. If I had witty fun things to say, maybe it would make this 20 minutes so painful for everybody. <laughs> the stick 
blender is quite warm. I do try to keep an eye on that when I'm blending a lot. Definitely at a bit more of a light trace here. I'd like to get some micas soon to play around with. Get some of those pretty soaps like Amy Anderson. She rough. She has a lot of nice soaps that she does too. She's our brainiac. Just branching out into some different lotions and like how I drift off in my thoughts there. A little sidetracked with my mixing. trying to get a hold of. There go. So definitely a true light trace here. You can see that. I hope. Um, and we have some light on that. Oh, it's it, more than a, a light trace. Definitely more like a pudding at this point. Just dragging through there. See that? So this I would say is almost ready to cover and leave it. I think I'll stick blend it for a couple more minutes. And we'll <laughs> We are definitely at thick pudding right there, without a doubt. So, I'm going to go ahead and blend that real quick one more time. And then it right took about 26 minutes to get there. That's a nice, nice thick pudding piece. Uh, it took about 26 minutes to get there. Definitely the longest it's ever taken me. But definitely could see the difference uh, getting that to come to trace. I could see the differences just in the color of the soap as it was getting closer. Stick blender definitely took a beating on that one. That was the longest we've ever gone. Just talked about my pet peeve of how people don't scrape things completely down when they're doing their soap. I scrape and scrape and scrape. Nice and thick that is right now and very nice and white and I honestly think that it's gonna cook up real nice as well 
because it's already gotten quite a bit thicker just since I stopped stick blending. So I am a little concerned about it cooking up out of the crack though. Never made um, soap this uh, deep in the crock pot before, or having not so much room in the crock pot, I should say. Uh, definitely going to unplug the stick blender here and take that out to the kitchen and get that cleaned off. And I am going to pause you guys and we'll come back. I'll come back when it's cooked down some and there's been another change in it and we'll go from there. Okay, here we are. Do you see this? Um, the soap is already starting to cook. It is definitely heavy, and if I do not keep my eye on this, it is definitely going to come right up out of there. I'm taking my gloves off because the lye is now dead in here, so we don't have to worry about that. This is most definitely a hefty mashed potato stage. And we are going to go over off out. Oh, oh no. That's what I I had a mess uh, flop out of the crock pot. It's uh, quite hard. And I have added, I took it and put it into a second crock pot that I happen to have sitting right here on the table. And, uh, what a mess. I lost some of it to the floor. And I've still got some stuck around on the crock pot that I'm trying to get all of off. And it's actually quite hard already. But of course it kind of gets hard and separates and goes back together and goes into that Vaseline stage. And I'm still cleaning up quite the mess off of here. I'm really going to have to take my crock pot out to the kitchen to clean it. I've got stuff all over my table now. Um, this is definitely what I would call Vaseline stage for the majority of the soap in here. And I will light this up a little bit so you can see. Um, I don't know if you can see that really. I can't tell from the angle I'm at. It has a Vaseline look to it. And I'm just kind of continuously stirring it to incorporate everything back in. Once it actually came up out of the crock pot, when I got the majority of it out to let it go back down, um, mixing it all back in and incorporating it back together, I would actually say that this is going to be ready as soon as the soap finishes melting. I have grease, lard, on everything, everywhere around the crock pot, the table. Definitely, 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 everything will go wrong your first time. You have so many things that you're trying. Kind of had a feeling that my crock pot was a little full. Thought so. See, and you can see the soap that's around the edges is definitely getting harder. So I would definitely say this is ready to see. 
it is very Vaseline -y. Um, down further into the crock pot. that. I guess that shows it better. Stir this up for you to see. Okay, right there is a good one right now. Right, right here. Um, let me stir up some more. Right there is a nice, nice Vaseline stage right there. That's what we're looking for. That's how you know it's done. After this, it's just overkill. So, I'm just going to mix this around good a couple of times. I also realized that I had my crock pot on high, which definitely should not have been on high. It should have been on low. I had it on high to melt down my lard and then forgot to turn it down. But I think it would have come up anyway because this was a pretty full uh, batch. So I think that that was going to happen no matter what. So we definitely have full gel here. Even at partial gel, you could mold it and have it still be just fine because it was a cold process recipe too. Oh yes, if you guys could see my table. My kids wanted to know did I feel stupid? Nope, I learned something. I learned that when you think something is too full, it probably is. <laughs> and you should probably switch it to another crock pot. Just so that it doesn't happen. Okay. Put it in this. Silicone with a wavy bottom. I did my beer soap for those of you that saw pictures of my beard soap. Beard, not beard. My bearded soap. This. Partially. I just want to mix this up one more time. Really good. And this is probably going to start to cool down super quick as soon as it's into the mold. And I'm going to have to move pretty quick. So... actually does look like mashed potatoes so I think I understand where people kind of get confused about mashed potato stage versus your Vaseline stage because it does really look like mashed potatoes at this point although it is gelled and I'll show you in just a minute here this is definitely overcooked compared to what I normally do because normally I have some fluidity in the movement of the soap and I do not have that. So definitely this is cooked too long. Oops. And actually I think what I might do is little water in here to make this move a little bit easier for me. Normally I would have had a hot water, but I don't really want to take the chance of walking away. And I would like this to be a little bit wetter than what's in the mold already because I would like 
the two of them to mold together, mold together, I guess. So, of course I can add up to um, two tablespoons per pound of oil, and I have six and a half pounds of oil in here, or lard, not oil. Use my wooden spoon. This poor thing is overheated. Old looking and mashed potatoes. already in the mold has already started to cool down. Oh yeah, that's rock hard in the mold. Rock hard. Now, if this doesn't separate, or if this does separate on me when I go to cut it, I will not be surprised in the least. Hopefully, the heat will melt this to this to what's already in here so it's not horrible it doesn't separate too bad on me pan that I'm putting this in is actually a 9x13 cake pan, silicone cake pan. Uh, so, it's even cooling down in the crock because the crock is off. So I have a funny feeling this is going to be a super hard bar of soap. And it's going to be definitely... Um, harder to cut. How hard that is and how white. Nice hard white. And here is my soap. And we're going to use this cake spreader. definitely hard. Okay. It's definitely going to have a not smooth top. That's okay. Aftermath of my table that was underneath my 100 year old table, or maybe even older. Okay, 
hoping that there are not any major air pockets, bubbles, anything in there. That is definitely going to be what you would call a um, rustic looking bar of soap. So, there we have it. And here's our mask. Certain what if there's anything underneath the cock pot? Not oh, too bad. The outside of the cock pot's covered. Yep. You can make this mess at home too, folks. Well, I'll be back.